morning. morning. Welcome to Church by the Sea. We're so glad you're here. This first Sunday of 2021. Man, I remember when I was a young lad thinking year 2000, I'd be 35 years old. And wow, that's going to be crazy and amazing. We're going to party like it's 1999, all those cool things. And now we're in 2021. It's amazing. I welcome those who are watching us online, wherever you may be, whether it be your car, your home, at the the office. But welcome, welcome, welcome. We thank you as well. And it's been amazing to kind of see the emails and, and messages that come in via the internet, the people that who are you know, friends of this church or members who go away for the wintertime and able to follow us along. And they say, we so appreciate it. So the one positive thing from 2020 is that we are online and we are continually making this as best we can, the most uh, authentic service with talking to a camera as well. So I welcome you all. And I hope that 2021 is a as we say, closing the gate, as we close the gate to 2021, as we have closed it, that we realize that 2021 can be a whole and will be a whole new year. And hopefully, prayerfully, we'll be sitting here one day with no masks sooner than later, maybe, who knows, and be able just to enjoy and have children's time together and pass an offering plate and all those wonderful things that we do in communion with real wafer bread as opposed to the little things that stuck in your throat that we have today. But still, it's wonderful to have communion together. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, our call to worship is on your bulletin. Please read along with me. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Please stand. Confession is found in your bulletin. Let us now pray this prayer. Let us have our, our words and our hearts be of one voice. Let us now pray. God, you make all things new, and you hold out a, a new day and a new year for us. But often we squander the opportunities, letting our doubts overwhelm us, letting our sins bind us, and letting our fears stop us. You offer us new dreams and we succumb to old weaknesses. 
You offer us hope, and we choose the comfortable. But we have touched the joy of Christmas. Let us carry a measure of delight and a bounty of love into your new day. Fill us with the joy of living and the spirit of giving as we celebrate the new year. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's take a moment for those things on your heart you want to talk to God about right now. Let us pray. Amen. You know, this 2021, we, we, we put behind us 2020, and hopefully as all, mentally as well, but as we make new changes, as we begin a new year, as we begin new things in our life, the old passes away, and, and behold, all things become new. In the same way with our relationship with Christ, it's through him that we have forgiveness. It's through him that forgives us of past, present, and what we'll do tomorrow because of his grace and his mighty love. It doesn't give us license to do as we wish, but it gives us the freedom to relax and enjoy the relationship we have with God and the freedom we have with his grace. So today, as we stand in this sanctuary, as you are at home or wherever you are, may you know deep within your soul that through his life, his death, his resurrection, you are forgiven. So my friends today, take to heart that you are free and you are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> The peace, Lord Jesus Christ, be always with you. Please greet those in the name of Christ that are around you. All right, well, good morning again. We have some announcements, and uh, as we continue our worship, um, I want you to know that there's Bible studies this week. We resume our normal Bible studies, which is Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. on Zoom. That's in your bulletin. If you want to join me, please zoom in and look forward to seeing you at 11 o'clock on Tuesday. And then Wednesday night at 6.30 in the green room. And SIS Bible study is for our, our ladies. They meet at 9.30, correct, on, on Wednesday morning in the green room as well. And so I encourage you to... Be a part of those Bible studies if you wish. And also these beautiful poinsettias, if you purchase one in honor of someone, please get them after worship today. If you want one, and there's no way that everyone who bought one is here, so if by all means, please come and take one. Don't take 30 and be rude. Take one or two or just wait to the very end and take them all. So, But um, <laughs> but we do want those out of here, so please, they're, they look lovely in your yard or at someone else's house or thrown in the middle of the highway, whatever you want to do with them. But um, just kidding, don't do that. But, uh, but please feel free to take the poinsettias. Um, today, on a, not a sad note, but on a praise note and a, a celebration note, uh, Bill Smart, who was a member of this church and a long time a fan of this church and the church in Washington as well, uh, he would go six and six kind of thing. His daughter, Anita Smart, is uh, our missionary that we support in Mexico and Guatemala. His service is today. And so at three o'clock virtually, if you know Bill, or if you want to be a part of it, you can call my cell phone or call the church before 2.30 and leave a voicemail, and I'll call you back with the Zoom link if you're interested. Uh, I'll be in the office Zoom in my, I'm doing an opening prayer for the service. So if you want to join us, by all means, call the church, leave a voicemail, and I'll call you back with the information. Um, let's see, flowers on the altar. These aren't real flowers, obviously, but if you want to buy flowers in honor of a wedding or a memory of someone or whatever reason, the sign-up board is out there, please do so. Uh, we'd love to have live, fresh arrangement like we usually do. So if that's something you wish, it's on the board there. Uh, we have some birthdays this week. Uh, we have one this week, actually. January 8th is Ellen Seaman's birthday. Is there any birthdays this week that are here or on the internet that chimed in? Nobody? All right. Then we have two anniversaries today. I think Mike and Sarah, you're listening. Happy anniversary today. Is their eighth anniversary, I believe? And then Marilyn Mark Conroy is the 7th of January. Any wedding anniversaries this week you want to share? Anyone? 
All right. Well, that is even better. I think that is all. Now we'll have our Old Testament reading by Don Standstill. Don, come on, sir. The Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from far. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I will hide me in the light, become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you.
You know, before we begin the sermon, I want to just share a couple things that I'm excited about in 2021. Um, our children's ministry has now moved back to their schedule of K through first grade, second and third grade, fourth and fifth grade. That way the fifth graders don't have to hang out with the lowly little third graders. Um, and you know how terrible that is. So but I'm excited for that. And our youth ministry is having their youth devotionals led by this Sunday, Kevin White and Jennifer's helping that. that. And we're have, are putting together, have put together a youth search committee to look for a youth uh, director, a youth pastor. So we're looking forward to finding that right person. So I encourage your prayers for that. So uh, 2021 is going to be a different year for us. Um, you know, we 2020 is behind us. We still have the remnants of it. Obviously, we have the feelings, the emotions, but uh, we have that. And so I'd like you to take maybe 37 seconds and just think of all of 2020, things that pop in your head, Good, bad, ugly, whatever. I want you to think about that for just 30 seconds. Okay. All those thoughts that crash through your brain at this moment, uh, listen now as we go through our time of our of our sermon. I'll be reading Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, and verse 25, and the very popular and pa uh, uh, preached on passage many times, Philippians 3, 12, and 14. So listen as I read. Isaiah 43. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sin no more. And then Philippians 3, not that I've already obtained all this, I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself as yet to have it taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the chance to be together in worship. We thank you for this wonderful sanctuary in this church that has, has had ministry here since 1956 officially. We thank you for that service and the fact that we have continued on uh, this great legacy of this great church in this community in this world. But help us and all our churches to work together. And we pray for peace and guidance and hope for 2021. We pray that your hand will be upon it like it always is. We pray we have leaders and local and national leaders that listen to your voice. And we just pray that we can be who you create us to be. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. So at Culver Military Academy in Indiana, they have an interesting a tradition upon graduation. Uh, the graduates go through, they get the diploma, but they pass through a gate, 
And the other side of the gate is a Culver graduate that shakes their hand and welcomes them into this next new life. Well, each one does that. And at the very end, uh, which is very symbolic, as you can imagine, going through a gate. But then at the very last graduate, and of course, they turn, they salute their fellow classmates and faculty members and family that are on the other side. But the very last graduate comes through, he closes or she closes the gate. And that is an amazing picture of what I think we, as followers of Christ and having an unbelievable 2020, need to close the gate. They're not closing the gate on their experiences. They're not closing the gate on the education these students had because that's the fiber, that's in the fiber of who they are, the discipline, whether it's positive or negative, that's who they are now. But they're closing the gate on they were a student, now they're a graduate. And I'm challenging us today, you know, 2020 was a difficult year for most of us. Not all of us. Some of us, if you were in the mass business, you made out like abandoned. But I mean, but if the things that we experience, the people that we lost, um, and uh, the, the, all the election issues and concerns that are still brewing, everything going on in 2020 has been crazy. And as far as my 56 years of life, it's probably the craziest year we've had that I've experienced. And the challenge today is where do we go from here? You know, two days ago, we passed through a gate as well. We passed through the gate of 2020 into the new year, 2021. And, and despite whatever has happened to you in 2020, I want to encourage you to, to salute it. Give it the honor it deserves. Even the bad things, even the things that brought you hurt, salute them. And maybe on New Year's Eve, like we did, we had sparklers and, you know, which people were concerned they'd grab the wrong end, which that's not a very painful, not a pleasant experience. No, the red hot fiery part, don't grab Grace. But, you know, maybe you had a champagne toast. Maybe you watched the ball drop, which was uneventful as I'll get out. Maybe you uh, just had family. Maybe you just did nothing. You put on a Hallmark movie and fell asleep at 9.30, which is fine too, Susie. But, you know, what, what, <laughs> her husband looked at it like, you did that. Uh, whatever you did, I hope you saluted 2020. Because like it or not, we're still here. And we're in 2021, and, and we are going to make the best of it. We don't forget what happened to us in 2020, the individuals that we lost, the great church members that have, we've lost, the friends, the family, the, the jobs you might have lost, the income that might have been greatly reduced or maybe to zero. Whatever 2020 was for you, salute it. And we don't say it's done with, we don't think about it anymore, but we don't have to live in it. We, 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 we close the gate, we move into 2021, and, and here we are. You know, the scripture lesson in Philippians 3 is one of the greatest mental health um, passages in all of the Bible because it talks about straining forward, not looking behind. And the Apostle Paul, who wrote this, is talking about maturity. And, and the Greek word for maturity he uses is the word telos. And that literally means two different things. It means first meaning is to be fully grown. An acorn is telos when it becomes an oak. Uh, people are telos when they grow beyond adolescence to full maturity, gaining not only in knowledge, but also wisdom and understanding. The one meaning of the word, that is, that's one meaning of the word, telos, and he talks about here in our passage. The other meaning is the word to fulfill the reason or purpose for, your, for you being created. A chair is telos when someone sits in it and it fulfills its purpose of being a chair. Um, you know, a pen is a wonderful tool, but it, fill, it fulfills its purpose when you use it to write with. People are tell us when they fulfill their destiny and their reason for which they were put on the face of the earth. How many of you all have done your career or in the middle of your career that you like, this is what I'm created to be? You know, when I was in high school, I played soccer, and there's a guy, his son name was Jim Rennie, R-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E. well, we, he, I was getting props for, you know, soccer. I wasn't great, but I was making the papers occasionally for getting arrested for this or that, but no, for, for soccer. And he was at this company and his people, hey, Jim, I saw your son on the news today. That's great. And he goes, no, that's not my son. But I got to know him from working there and he was a HR guy in charge of hiring people and putting people in the right positions, you know, whatever. And I got that's a great job. I was a junior in high school. I think I might like that. And he made pretty decent money too. And as I got to know his job a little better, um, it's also firing people. And I'm that's like, oh, 
let's, let's hire someone else for that job. But the point is, I thought I wanted to be an HR guy. And then I go off to college, play soccer in college, and become a Christian my second year in college. And, and through that process and feeling the desire to want to put people in the right jobs at the church, so I mean, in, in, in work, you know, I'm like, you're gifted here, let's put you here. That's what I thought more or less HR was doing, which is the part I liked a lot about it. But as I grew in my faith and understood, you know, maybe God's doing this or that, I realized I really enjoy being in the church, as crazy as that is. And then I graduated college, and I share all this long story to say, from wanting to be in HR to work with people, and then turning my life to give my life to Jesus Christ in my heart in 1983, and reading the scriptures and getting involved in church, which I never really had before, really, God was calling me to work with people, but in this crazy environment. And never thought I'd want to be a senior pastor. I never did. But here I am. And the challenge I have for you and for all of us, and that I keep using that word challenge because that's exactly what it is, is we don't need to be comfortable with what we had. Make new memories. You know, some of you all have been married for a long time. When was the last time you took your, your wife on a date? I don't mean going to Southport Raw Bar, which is great. But I mean like a date. You actually schedule something. You actually take a shower, which is a big push for some of you. Um, or was the last time you had, you had some time with your best friend? Just say, I'm, you know what? I'm going to hang out with my best buddy, whether it's on the Zoom or a phone call. Guys, you have to make new memories. This church we'll talk about in a minute has, has had a wonderful history. But we can't just rest, in which you'll hear my first point, resting on our laurels. laurels. You can't do that. And it's so easy to do. You know, so the scripture passage that Paul's talking about says, not that I've already attained telos or maturity, but the one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the prize for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Paul's using a sports metaphor. And some of you all know I support a certain football team. I don't speak about it very much, but occasionally I bring it up. Um, they'll be playing January 11th against a certain other team in Miami. I'm not sure who they're playing, but it's somebody, I think. But Paul's using this analogy of sports. And if when Najee Harris is running down the field, he happens to play for a certain team I like, and he jumps over a player that he did a couple nights ago, if he looked behind him to see who was chasing him, he wouldn't have made that jump and made a humongous, awesome highlight, high reel. If you haven't seen it yet, YouTube is the coolest thing ever. But if he's looking behind him, he's not going to be able to do it. And I have that same problem, and I know we all do. We look behind us as we're trying to go forward. And you can somewhat go direction that way, but you're kind of weaving. God wants us to look straight ahead. And all those wonderful things that 2020 brought and those bad things that 2020 brought, they're behind you. And as best you can't forget them. You learn, obviously. They're in your brain. They're in your fiber of who you are. But you don't have to live in them. And so Bobby Knight, some of you all know this name. He was an Indiana basketball coach for 1971 to 2000 and coached other teams. And in 1984, he coached the Olympic basketball team and who won the gold medal. And one of those players was a guy named from Oklahoma named Wayman Tisdale. Some of you all know who that man is um, or was. He passed away. But they were playing a college team just to get ready for the Olympics. And they're up 90, like 90 to 61, something like that. And there's seconds left in the game and the ball kind of trickles past uh, Wayman Tisdale, and, and he doesn't dive after it because, you know, he just, and then coach calls timeout, and if you know Bobby Knight, he definitely had a, a small issue with his anger. Um, I say monster issue with his anger, but that's that's what it was. But so he sits the, all the guys on the bench, and he looks at Wayman, and he goes, what are you doing? And he goes, well, what do you mean, coach? And he goes, why didn't you go after the ball? And he goes, well, coach, we're, we're way ahead, and there's seconds left. And he goes, how do you know we're we're way ahead. He goes, well, the scoreboard, I can read, coach. It says 91 to 60. And he goes, son, as long as you're playing for me, you'll never look at that scoreboard. And he goes, the reason is, if you, if you look at it and you see you're way ahead, you get cocky and you get complacent. And you don't go after a loose ball. If you're way behind, you get discouraged and you stop fighting. So don't look at that scoreboard. And I share that story. Obviously, you get the point of it. But it's so easy to look at the scoreboard of what we have done and what we're doing as opposed to looking at Christ, saying, God, what are you calling me to do? You know, this church 
has so much potential to do some amazing, and has done and will do some amazing things in missions. And in, but in Bible study and in ministry, we need some help to get in classes for you all, from groups, small groups, whatever you want to call it, homes, home groups, Zoom groups. But 2021, I'm looking forward to doing some new things, getting some extra help with guys like Brian, who preached last Sunday, is an amazing guy, and Joe and, and Randy and, and whoever else, our, our, our leadership team, you know, with session and corporate board to really, how can, what can we do different in 2021 and your help? So what's it mean to be mature? What's it mean to, to grow in your faith? You know, the Bible says to forget what's behind and move forward. That's, that's one. I think one of the first things that Paul is talking about is, like I mentioned, don't rest on your laurels. Don't rest on what you have done. Oh, 1985, that was a great soccer season. Or 19, you know, 99, blah, blah, blah. What are you making now? I don't care how old you are. And if you're homebound, you can still make memories. You can still do things that create, oh, remember that time the Christmas tree fell over and the dogs ran away? Make memories. Open your heart to get what God's calling you to do. Forget what's behind. Here again, it's, it's in your fiber. You don't literally just not think about it anymore, but you don't have to live in it. You don't have to pack your suitcase and carry it with you all the time. You know, this church, like I mentioned, has had a long history from Edward Downey, who's on the wall there, our founding pastor and pastor since then, and Dr. Bill Evans and Dr. Lyndon DeBee. And this church has had tremendous growth. And since I've come here in 2013, we've had tremendous growth as well. We're up to 350 members, give or take. And, and we've done some great things in, in the community and the world. But if that's all we focus on, those great things that have happened, as opposed to happening, Guys, we're, we're kind of falling down, and, and this isn't a, a Newt Rock to kind of pick you up and kick in the bootstraps kind of sermon, other than in your own life. Some of you all are retired, and that's and, and enjoy it. I can't wait. I, I can't wait, but I'm looking forward to my retirement too. But there's things you can do because you have hopefully maybe a little less structured time, but you have time. And maybe you're in the throes of your career. Don't forget your family or your friends. And maybe you're not even in a career yet. You're still in high school and college. Guys, you can make memories, make things that are going to last. Don't rest on who we've been, but who you are. When you close the gate on things, it doesn't mean it's gone. It just means you're pushed past it. You know, in verse 18, 19, it says in, in Isaiah, forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. When the last time you had a new thing? Anything. When the last time you had a new thing? Could be a new thing that wasn't good. Guys, God is calling us to a new thing. He's calling this church to a, a new thing. I have no idea what it is. I have my hopes and dreams that one day we can be, this green tape can be taken down and we can be sitting everywhere. And when we say, get up and greet your neighbor, literally you get up and you're hugging, you're high-fiving, you're taking people's wallet, whatever. You're just being together and enjoying being in worship, going to restaurants and having to worry about someone sneezing, which I guess you shouldn't sneeze in a restaurant like that anyway, but I don't, don't know why I shared that example. But just being in a restaurant, being together, guys, well, that day will come. So let us not carry the baggage of 2020 into 2021. And we all do. And the idea is to think about what bags you've got. Some of us have a little carry bag. Some of us have Samsonite that can't be destroyed like the gorilla back in the day. You have bags and bags. You have a U-Haul full of bags. And that's who you are. But you don't have to carry them. Because the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. Not just the cool things like you can do this, that, but the things that you struggle with. And maybe you struggle with all your life. And there's not a magic pill to take, a, a scripture verse that will change everything. But as you be honest with who you are and where you are and honest with what's going on in your life, it's amazing how God can do little things to make that bag. Take out a couple of shirts that you don't need in that bag. Take out a pair of old shoes that you never wear. And all of a sudden the bag gets a little lighter. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, I haven't. I haven't carried that suitcase around for two days. And next thing you know, that suitcase full of potentially negative things could be gone. 
So I encourage you to think about that. C.S. Lewis said this, sometimes a familiar captivity is frequently more desirable than unfamiliar freedom. Read to you again. Sometimes a familiar captivity is frequently more desirable than a unfamiliar freedom. Guys, I don't have any answers that I can just say, here's what, look what I've done. But I as a fellow struggler, I want to challenge you to trust in Christ that the future is in the palm of his hands. And this maybe unfamiliar freedom is exactly what it is. It's freedom. Not the stuff that you cling to that you know you can count on, but it could be negative for you. Because we can do all things to Christ who gives us strength. You know, a little boy and his daddy are going to sleep, and, or at least the father was putting the boy to sleep, and turn the light off, and, and they talked about their day, and everything. It, it was really dark in the room, and the little boy looks at his daddy, and he says, Daddy, it sure is dark in here. And he, he goes, yeah, it is. And all of a sudden, the little boy reaches over. He can, he's, the dad fills this little tiny hand into his hand, and he says, Daddy, I thought, I thought I'd hold your hand just in case you get a little scared. Are you a little scared? I know we have a lot of things that the cruise industry is just ripped. And there's many of our people here as well as our community that still have no real answer what's gonna, when that can start coming back online and, and have, a, uh, have a job, so to speak. And many other things. Are you scared? That's okay if you are. And that's real. And that's honest. And that's where you are. But just beyond that gate we passed on Friday, just beyond this New Year's Eve, the New Year's gate for the new year, is the hand of God reaching out to you, saying, take it. Together we can walk through this. So forget what's behind you. Strain forward to what's ahead and press on toward the goal. What is God calling you? Maybe it's just to be a heck of an awesome dad. And man, do that. Maybe it's calling you to, to make a big difference in this church or the church you go to or the community you live in, do that. Maybe God's calling you just to be a prayer warrior like George is. Someone who just prays. Can't do much. He can't run, the, run a marathon. He can't run around, but he can pray, and he does. So before you take God's hand and you walk into this 2021, I want to challenge you with one last thing. Close the gate. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. I pray as we think about all what might come this year, the things that are going to make us so happy and excited to things that are break our hearts, we just lift them up to you, whatever they are. And Lord, you, we give us the confidence knowing that you walk with us through the highs and lows of life. Lord, help us to close the gate on things last year and years before that bring us down. And the things that we celebrate and love, it's okay to relive them occasionally, but Lord, help us not to live in them. Help us to move forward, to strain ahead. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Amen. This is Communion Sunday. As you can see, the bread and your lovely little cup of goodness in front of you. Uh, but on, that, on those Sundays, we have communion, we, which is only one Sunday a month. We like to do the, the Apostles' Creed. So if you would, please stand with me if you're able and repeat the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And as always, as we the giving of our church, we don't pass the offering plates, but if you feel like you like to give to this church financially, there is a blue little uh exiting box on the wall there. You can place that in there if you would. And if you can give online, you can use a church app, you can snail mail, you can throw it in the box as you leave outside. You can come by during the week. But it's, whether it's financial or your time, your talent, give as God has given to you. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts for communion. You know, this table, this church by the 
classification, but the elements on top of it are designed for all those who claim to Christ. Catholic, Protestant, whoever you may be, that you are <coughs> sharing this table together. It's not for those who are weak. It's not for those who think they're strong. It's for those who are, think they're weak and know that they need help. It's not for those who have everything all put together and don't need anything. It's for those who realize that this is a great equalizer, a table that says we are all equal in God's eyes. Billy Graham and this person put all equal at the foot of the cross. And this bread and this cup of wine shares with all the body and blood of Christ and the body broken for us. So as we take this, as you take this at your seat or whether you're at home, I encourage you to eat this bread and, and drink this wine and therefore receive the healing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this time and chance to share this meal. We thank you that it's still different than what we're accustomed to, but we know that you can speak through it. You can use this bread and this juice, this wine, to draw us to your side. Lord, I pray and thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for the chance to be here. We thank you with the whole church on earth and the Company of heaven, we worship and adore in your glorious name. As we come to our time of prayer, I want to share a few names as well that 
or in the bulletin, but also those that did not make it that in the bulletin. And then see if you have any prayer requests to be thinking of it. You want to share any with me. Uh, but in the name you see in the need of prayer, it says Heather Banter, Joe Care, Mary Care, uh, Sant uh, Santa Costantino, Maria DeRuthi, John Edwards, Natalie Hannon, Jim McCory, Guy Molinay, Charles Moore, Liz Quayle, Tom Shoup, uh, Joyce Tenike, Julia Vasquez, and Jim White, and also Carolyn and Charlie, uh, Chris Kane's uh, aunt and uncle, just pray for their health. Any prayer concerns you all have? Yes, Michael. Okay, Andres Gunter's Roger, Angela, and the choir ministry of this church. Is that correct? Uh, Roger, Angela, and Tiffany. And Tiffany. So let's lift them up. Anybody else have a prayer concern from the chapel or the sanctuary? Or guys behind me? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we once again thank you for this worship service, for this church. We thank you for its symbol in this community of being uh, a place of grace and acceptance from all flavors of life. We thank you for that freedom we have in you to be different and to follow your word as closely as we can and, and, and be different from others who read the same scripture and think other things. For Father, for me, that's what makes this Christianity and makes your word special. So Lord, help us to honor our interpretations and what we think scripture is trying to teach us and help us to live honorably uh, as followers of you. Lord, lift up those names I mentioned, those that Michael shared from the internet. And Lord, those prayer concerns that are in our heart that we haven't mentioned to anyone, whether it's relationships or the lack thereof or financial or out of work or, or in work but can't stand it, we just pray for help and peace. Lord, we do thank you for our men who, and women who serve in our military and their service and sacrifice. Lord, we lift up to you our election and all that's going up this Tuesday, and we just pray for peace and guidance. We pray for um, just your hand in our land that we can be a light to this world. Lord, help us as we try to come back from what 2020 has brought us economically. And Lord, we pray for all those individuals that are homeless and struggling. We help us as a, as a people to do our best and to help. I lift up to you our firefighters and our, our teachers and our, our, our nurses and doctors and our hospital administrators. And, and we just ask for guidance. Lord, thank you that we as a nation can become one. And we have different opinions, but we don't have to hate each other. Lord, help us to be strong. Help us to be graceful. Help us to be loving. Help us to be you. We pray all these things the way you taught us to pray, by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand. Thank you. 
picked that hymn for a reason, because I know we have at least one ex-Baptist here, Beverly, uh, who is from Huntsville, Tennessee, up in the mountains, and she's leaning, leaning. Now, for those that don't know that song, that hymn, it's a great one, as you can tell. But I wanted us to, that we can lean on one another. We can lean on Christ. We can trust him for our, for our sustenance, for who we are as a, as, a, as a person, as a group, as a church. So today, as you lean, and as we try to lean as safely and as quickly as possible, that we realize that God does have this whole world wrapped up in his hand. And there's churches like this and many others that are left perfect harmony with the world. And where you can go into church and not be cast out and finger pointed, they love the moment. For me,